Being together can be distressing or painful. If being alone is lonely, what would you choose? Many people say that they would choose loneliness. Even when we are together, there are many cases where we are lonely. How can we overcome loneliness? When you are young, you worry about loneliness. But as you get older, loneliness comes to you as a fear. If you are young, you can earn money and have strength. But if you are old, you have no strength. Moreover, what if you are alone? We have to be alone as we get older today. I will tell you about three things that you must take care of in your old age. Number one, not knowing how to be alone and bothering someone. When asked what they are most worried about as they get older, men cite loneliness and women cite economic power. As a result of combining various data, loneliness and economic power were ranked in the top three concerns. The matter of eating and living is the most urgent of all. If this matter can be managed to some extent, I think loneliness is the biggest worry. However, loneliness was not the only problem in old age. Loneliness is a problem for all age groups and it causes particular problems in adolescence when people are sensitive to peer pressure. There are many cases where people cling to a friend they shouldn't because they can't stand the loneliness and they lean on them too much and push them farther away. It is said that human relationships are difficult, but in fact, there were many cases where loneliness has led to difficult human relationships. The more you try to avoid loneliness, the more likely you are to be swayed and weakened. Some words that fit perfectly here come to mind. Human misfortune comes from not knowing how to be lonely. Anthony Stowe, a world-renowned psychoanalyst called Britain's Best Intellect, says in his book, Consolation of Solitude. Those who cannot stand loneliness and are swayed by relationships will only be dragged by other people's standards for the rest of their lives. These are the words of Professor Takashi Saito, author of the book, The Power of a Long Time. A person who only tries to avoid loneliness develops a lot of suffering inside. It's easy for some people to be obsessive. But those who know how to choose loneliness can appear aloof. Rather, it reveals a strong position in human relationships. If loneliness is the feeling of being unable to endure being cut off from others, solitude is choosing loneliness. In other words, if you develop the ability to be alone, you will become stronger in your relationships and in life. The ability to be alone is not to cut yourself off from the world, but to know how to enjoy your time alone and think deeply about it. Just as nothing in the world lasts forever, relationships with friends do not last forever either. There are people whose path ends sooner, and there are relationships that last longer. Just thinking that you can live with good people with respect and consideration frees you from obsession and disappointment in your friends. If you know how to be alone, you can get this power. But if you don't, you will end up torturing yourself. The reason why we fear being alone as we get older is because we worry about being lonely and what we will do if we are alone when we get sick or die. You don't want to be alone. You are looking for a mate and a friend, but what if they go first? If you don't know how to be alone, you will beg honestly for someone's time and attention. 
you may complain that they don't come and take care of even the smallest things. I didn't know how to eat alone, and when someone had to take care of me, the people around me and my children were distressed. What if you have a bad temper here? Quality of life is further reduced, and conflicts grow. Then there will be no one left by your side. Expecting others to take care of you, not doing things on your own, and expecting others to do something for you is the same as creating loneliness. The older you get, the more you hurt yourself and others. The older you get, the more you feel the fear of being alone. If you have a religion, you can gain the strength that you are not alone and you can soothe your loneliness through a companion animal or a pet. It is also helpful to ask for government services in preparation for old age and death without missing opportunities to contact people through hobbies and volunteer activities. Learning how to live alone and enjoy life alone is the way to develop one's own strengths and improve the quality of life. Number two, treat the person next to you as precious. We feel affectionate toward the people who come by once in a while and miss them. On the other hand, we can see a lot of flaws in someone who lives with us. Then we can undergo some conflicts and then there will be times we don't like them. At these times, there are cases where you speak bluntly or unwisely show a bit of calypsis to the person you live with. Some people make the mistake of doing what they should never say. It is a comparison with a daughter-in-law or other children who visit from time to time. Comparative words, let alone persuasion, are dangerous words that turn people away. It is unreasonable to set only your own standards and want others to meet your standards. It makes me feel that there is just too much greed. There are cases when you neglect your loved ones. It is a case of neglecting those who are close to us and being good to those who are far away. In other words, we often neglect those who are closest to us while being kind to those who are far away. In the end, you will lose someone dear to you and realize later that the person next to you was precious. You have to be good to them when they are there. But regret after leaving is similar to after your parents passed away. It's good to be good at remembering the preciousness of the person next to you, including your spouse. We must refrain from words and actions that forget their preciousness. Personally, I want you to expand the scope of the person next to you. There are also people who are quietly by your side beyond your family. There are many people you may or may not have been close to, but regardless, it's important to express gratitude to the people you've had a connection with. When you are really alone, away from family or friends, they play a bigger role in helping you overcome your loneliness and give you strength. Number three, be open even if not friendly. In recent years, many studies have found that people with high openness are more successful or positive, even if their level of agreeable loss is not high. This phenomenon is coming out a lot, especially in happy people. Amicability or agreeable loss refers to a tendency to get along well with others. 
it is a mind to be considerate of others and to live harmoniously. Openness is an open mind to new things, a mind with high imagination and curiosity. The thing is, having several relationships, even if they are somewhat casual, can be positive. It's not that you don't have to be amicable, it's that shallow as well as deep relationships increase happiness. It is said that the number of human relationships we have decreases as we get older. And this is because we only keep relationships with good people over time. Apart from this, it's a good idea to create another network even if you don't have deep relationships. Meeting new people and taking on new challenges such as clubs, hobbies, and educational programs are helpful for self-development and vitality. In particular, curiosity is a source of vitality and has the power to overcome loneliness. There is a saying that people grow old the moment they lose their curiosity. Openness, including curiosity, gives you the strength to persevere even when you are old and alone. Curiosity and openness are weapons to overcome not only old age, but also present loneliness and turn them into opportunities for development. Thank you for watching the video, The Reason We Have to Be Alone As We Get Older, provided by history and current events. Gina and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.